Once again, we invite you for our Wednesday service today. We continue from where we left uh, last time. Isaiah 6, verse 6, the Bible says, Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live core, which he had taken with tongues from the halter. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away, and your sin purged. As eight, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. And he said, Go, and tell these people. Father, bless his service today. May the grace of God be upon every one of us. Even as we connect and as we listen in, and as we participate, mighty Father, we pray for the life, your life flowing to us. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Shout Amen. to the Lord. Clap yes. your hands. Woo. Celebrate yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. 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 Hallelujah, sava very big godo. Eh, 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 hallelujah, sava very big godo. Hey, hallelujah, sava very big good. 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 Go shout, I go shout. I 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 go dance, I go dance. I go dance, I go dance. I go dance, I go dance. Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good. Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good. He has shown me his mercy. As a very big God, hey, He has shown me His power. As a very big God, hey, Hallelujah! As a very big God, Jesus died for my sins. As a very big God, hey, Hallelujah! As a very big God, I go dance, 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 so. I go dance, I go dance. 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 Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good do. 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 Hallelujah, shout to the Lord. Amen. Hey, are you able to dance wherever you are? Come on, dance. Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good. Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good. Hey, yeah, 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 hallelujah, it's a very big good. Hey, hallelujah, it's a very big good. When I was broke in my pocket. I go dance, I go dance. I go dance, I go dance. 
says then one of the seraphim flew to me having is and a live call he and taken with the whole with the with tongues from the altar there is power that flows from the presence of God to change our lives to change our sinful lives to change our struggles and to place us on a plane where we have victory. I want us to pray for victory today. Just go before the Lord and tell him you want to live a victorious life. Yes, that the fire of God will be available for you to live victoriously. That the power of God will be available for you to overcome whatever rises against you. In the name of Jesus, Isaiah says, the angel touched his mouth and said, This has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin is purged. Pray if you have a predisposition to sin. You have a habit that has controlled you for years. I want you to go before the Lord right now and tell him to touch your life. And you will see the change and the transformation that will come in your life. If you have children that have rebelled against God and they have walked away and they are addicted in alcohol and any, any form of drug, today I want us to believe for their rescue in the name of Jesus. The fire of God is able to set free and to break every chain and to destroy every chain of addiction every habit that contradicts scripture and the lifestyle of a believer is able to be broken from your life in the name of Jesus Christ we declare healing right now we declare restoration right now we declare that the captives are set free young men and women that are controlled by immorality 
that are controlled by drugs and addictions. We set them free, O oh God. We declare in the name of Jesus that our children shall serve the Lord. We say, like, like Joshua of old, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord with the entirety of our children, with the entirety of our families. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the fire of God touch them wherever they are. Those that we cannot reach, oh God, touch them wherever they are. Bring healing, bring healing, bring healing, bring restoration in Jesus' name. Set them free, oh God, and let there be testimonies in the house of the Lord. This has touched your lips and your iniquity and your sin is taken away from you in Jesus' name. And you see, when our sin is punched and our iniquity taken away, we are able to respond to God. We are able to respond to the call of God. Verse 8 says, Also I heard, also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Who shall I send? And who will go for us? God is waiting. The Bible says the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. Pray to the Lord of the harvest that he may send laborers into his harvest field. You know, there are things that are hindering our, our ears from hearing God. Things that have become impediments to God speaking to us. But as we, because we have prayed today, hallelujah, we believe that our sin is punished and our iniquity is taken away. And therefore we are able to hear and respond to the call of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us pray for the response of the people. Hallelujah. Even in our country and in our Kenya, that the population of this country shall respond to the call of God, shall respond to the calling of God and to the bidding of God concerning the nation. Because God has a desire and a direction for our country. And we declare today in the name of Jesus, oh, we shall serve the purposes of God. We will respond to the will of God for our lives in Jesus' name. The Bible says, then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go tell this people keep on hearing and do not understand keep on seeing but do not perceive make the heart of these people dull and their ears heavy and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and return and be healed you know this was a very a very disheartening response as in the people will keep hearing but they do not hear and we don't want to repeat um, the mistakes of the past even as Kenya goes into election next year we don't want to become a people that are and don't hear we don't want to become people that have dull hearts with heavy ears that cannot hear and hearts that cannot see I want us to pray that we will not repeat the mistakes of yesterday. Whether at the family level, whether in your office, in your business, or whether politically as a country, we will not repeat the mistakes of yesterday. We will not fall into the same ditch that we fell the other day. We want to go and to move forward. You have been on this mountain too long. God is saying it is time to move forward. God is saying it is time to move forward. Oh God, remove the blinders from our eyes. Oh God, remove the wax. Oh God, in our ears that hinders us from hearing. Oh God, oh mighty Father, remove the heaviness of heart, the callousness of heart that causes us not to respond to you, that causes us not to obey the truth, that causes us 
not to listen to wisdom. Mighty God, cause us, oh God, oh mighty Father to hear, to see and to understand so that we can return, so that we can be restored. Oh God, that we will not perish. Our children will not perish. Our country will not perish. Our economy will not be destroyed. Our nationhood will not be crushed. In the name of Jesus, Father, you will cause us to rise. Father, you will cause us to rise. Father, you will restore us. You will remember mercy and grant us restoration and cause us, oh God, to walk in humility. Oh, gracious God, in the name of Jesus. And you know, as we wind up, it's very disheartening because verse 11 said, Isaiah asks, Lord, I said, Lord, how long? How long? How long will I keep on preaching to these people? How long will I keep on telling them without hearing and having eyes without seeing and hearts that do not understand and the message is heartbreaking because Isaiah says until the cities are laid waste and without inhabitants the houses are without men in other words many of us wait too long and you we are so completely flattened by the enemy and you we are so oppressed and so much in pain and you will respond to God we will not wait I want us to go up before the Lord and say we will not wait for pain we will not wait for destruction we will not wait for violence to be in our streets we will not wait for desolation we will not be we will not wait until we are carried captive and respond to god in babylon we will not see sad, sing sad songs in babylon sitting at rivers saying we remember in jerusalem we will not wait for destruction we will amend our ways. We will amend our ways. We will amend our ways before that time comes. Oh God, mercy Lord. Help us, oh God, to have the humility to respond and to obey you when you speak to us once or twice. Oh God, that we will not harden our hearts when we hear you, O oh God, we will not harden our hearts and be destroyed by the sword and be destroyed, O oh God, that we will listen, we will listen, we will listen, O oh God. Jesus. Mercy. Plead the mercies of God. Let the mercies of God. The Bible says, God's mercy triumphs over judgment. That he is able to send mercy in the nation so that we are not destroyed. He is able to send mercy in your home so that you are not destroyed. So that your children are not destroyed. So that your family remains. Oh, we plead the mercies of God. They are new every morning. They are many new every morning. Let them be more near today. Let them be near today. This is a new day, oh God. We plead your mercy. Mercy, mercy, oh God. Mercy, we pray. Yes, we are here to worship the Lord. We are here to tell him we are here, oh God. We are hoping, our hearts are open to you. Give your offering. Hallelujah. Even in that mode of worship. And you know, meditation on the goodness of the Lord and the masses that come to us. Give your offering. Hallelujah. Father, bless your people as they give. Minister to them, Lord. Show them your kindness. Thank you because you are good and your mercy endures forever. Bless your servant as he ministers. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ah, uh, Praise the Lord. Amen. So I believe you've given your offering. Hallelujah. And even if you have not given now because you're using your phone, give her the hand of the service and the Lord will bless you. So I want us to receive uh, our uh, reverend Onesimus Weru to continue. Hallelujah with a message in Jesus' name. This Wednesday, 
It's wonderful to be in the presence of the Lord. And it's wonderful to know that our God is a faithful God. We continue with a, uh, a subject of uh, happiness and humility. But today, I really want to shift the gears a little bit uh, and share about an economic principle of God. Because uh, there will be no much joy and happiness if really there wasn't uh, any opportunity for you and I to, be, to live lives that are driven by specific kingdom values. You, the, when, uh, last time when we were here, we talked about uh, happiness. We say it, it is, comes because of uh, uh, having harmony. And uh, we realize that harmony brings about humility. But the big challenge last uh, Wednesday was how, how comes that Jesus was actually happy? And uh, can we even talk that there was harmony in everything that happened? Being born in a manger, being followed from everywhere, being betrayed by the friends, uh, being wanting to be, to be killed, uh, everybody saying crucify him. I mean, what, what is it that was happy, harmonious, that it brought about humility. And we looked at three things last week and we said that, that uh, for us to be able to understand what humility is and to enjoy, we must know that Christ is our best example. And if Christ is our best example, then we need to ask ourselves a question. And the question was, what would Jesus do? And we say, what does that mean to you, what Jesus would do? And we saw uh, three things. Uh, reading from the scriptures uh, last Sunday, we realized that uh, he did not demand what he deserved. The Bible says that uh, being a son of God and having come from God, he did not cling to that fact. Instead, he just came down. Number two, we say that uh, Jesus uh, looked for opportunity to serve. Every moment he got, he looked. And, and you know, one of the Sundays here, I was listening to the pastor, and uh, he was talking about Jesus taking up the towel and uh, wrapping that towel uh, to himself and starting to wash the disciples' feet. And I think in that sermon, one of these Sundays, if I can remember it correctly, I started asking myself, then what could have been going on in the lives of these people when Jesus decided to serve them? Maybe they started arguing, don't you know who I am? I, I am the treasurer. That's Judas. Maybe the another one said, you don't, I am Peter, or I am so and so. Maybe there were a number of issues and things that made these people to be who they are that made Jesus take the towel wrap around himself and did the service. And we say that Jesus is the best example of humility. And if you want to be like Christ, and if you want joy, we said last uh, Wednesday that happiness leads to harmony. Harmony leads to humility. Sometimes we want to cling to our position or we want to cling to what we want. But, but lastly, we also said something like this. You must do what is right regardless of the pain that there is. You must do what is right. How many times do we fail to stand up, even as men of God, even as Christians? How many times do we fail to stand and to do what is right just because what is right will deny you something now? But don't you agree with me that though it was denied of Jesus an opportunity and a privilege for a moment, today the entire world knows that surely he was quite a hero. And the Bible tells us that he is on the right hand side of God. And he was made great. And he was given everything. And he was given a name. And in that name, every knee shall bow. He was given authority. In fact, the Bible says, and Jesus said, our authority. I am given all authority and all power I give to you. So at the end of the day, it's important for you and I to realize that uh, happiness is not necessarily because things are very good around you, but, but because you know who you belong to, 
whose you are. That one alone gives you an opportunity whose you are. Where have you come from? Where are you going? What, why are you doing what you are doing? Why are you doing this? You know, Reverend Miano was challenging us here about fellowship. And he was saying, you know, fellowship is everything. Because we need one another. We cannot stay on our own. We cannot enjoy Bible on our own. And I really am praying that the pandemic, the so-called corona, would pass quickly. But one of the things I have learned about this season, that God has continued to remind me again and again, that we must be people who are able to take personal responsibility to Christian growth. I do remember the days of a Global Leadership Summit. When we began Global Leadership Summit all over the world, one of the biggest challenges we had is that we were having speakers on screen. And everybody hearing that was screaming. Why do you bring speakers on screen? Just sell me the tape and I will watch it at home. Now you are at home. Are you able to watch the service? Are you realizing how powerful, how dangerous the thing you are praying for? It has finally come. Now you have to be responsible for your own Christian growth. Sometimes the church is not enough for everybody else. And you, even if you went to all the churches in Kenya, we don't have enough churches, but we have enough airwaves to get you to where you are. And you can listen to me and you can grow. And therefore, that is part of of an opportunity to humble us, to understand what God wants us to do. And so today, I want to share with you a principle, not many principles, just a principle of a kingdom economy. Because you know they say that uh, God has given each one of us a talent in the form of gift and skills and treasure based on the abilities. We are told that. I think that's in Matthew 24. That we are given abilities. But that is not where I am. All I'm trying to say in the God's kingdom economy, in the, the economic principles, each one of us has on, an, an opportunity to thrive. And you must know what makes you thrive. You cannot complain about what is going on without looking at what is going on in your own life. The principle of the kingdom requires that we, the children of God, understand something about God uh, very well. Because there are things we are told here that we each have a responsibility to exercise wise stewardship, wise management of the things we have. Those are, I'm talking about, I'm talking about just some general principles that each one of us have been given ability to manage what you have. So the question is, what do you have? Some of us are very good musicians. Some of us here, like Pastor, uh, like Pascal, is good with a number of things. Uh, sometimes I see him with the guitar. Sometimes I see him in. Uh, you, you are a gifted. Now, the principle of the kingdom is that you may be able to know how to manage that and to harness that. There is another principle, and I imagine I'm not talking about principles, but I want just to give you a few of the principles because I come down, before I come down to the principle, to the principle. These are a principle, isn't it? The, the princip economic principle of God is what I'm looking for today. It's different, it's different from the principles. Eh? So, the, the another principle says something like this. The reward of our stewardship is the increase of our responsibility. And that's a principle of the kingdom of God. That actually the, the, the reward of our stewardship is the increase of our ability. And the entrance into our joy. Now, those are the principles. But I want to share with you something today that will transform your life. That will change your mind. I want to borrow from Proverbs 11, verse 10, verse 12, uh, verse, verse 10, verse 11, and verse 25. I want to surprise you today about an important principle for all of us. 
that is critical for you to have a bare minimum of the things that are required of you as a righteous person. Speaking to you as a Christian, speaking to you as a man who believes, speaking to you as a person who is in this country as a citizen of this great nation. But you know that the Bible says that eh, we are going somewhere. Are you going somewhere? Not all of us are going somewhere. But those who know God, we are not threatened by disease and sickness and terminal illness, illness and all this manner of things. We are surprised and scared if we do not have a purpose for, with which we are living in this life that we are living on. So one of the great principles that I want you to discover, I want you to see it from uh, Proverbs 10, verse number, Proverbs 11, verse number 10. Pardon me. The Bible says, the whole city, the whole city. How many of us are from the city of Nairobi? Maybe you are from the city of Kitale, the city of Bungoma, the city of Akakamega, the city of Kisumu. The city, you are from different cities. P people understand cities. Some of us call them towns. I am from the city of Nairobi. All of you here, you are from the city of Nairobi. Now listen, the Bible says the whole city celebrates when godly succeed. When godly succeed. So one of the great principles I want you to check, uh, one of the questions I want you to ask yourself, it is part of the one principle I'm sharing today. Are you succeeding in the city of Nairobi because the Bible says the whole city celebrates when godly succeed. How many godly people do we have here? How many godly people are listening to me today? How many of us are godly? The cities celebrate when the righteous they shout for joy uh, they shout for joy when the wicked die. So, when you succeed, we celebrate. When the wicked die, yes, they celebrate when the wicked die. That's the Bible. Maybe my Bible is different from yours, but I can tell you the word of God says, the righteous, the godly will succeed. The righteous, the, the city will celebrate when the righteous succeed. So, it is important in this what I am calling economic principle of God that the righteous know themselves and they ask themselves a question, am I succeeding? Last Wednesday, I talked about the, the relationship. I just mentioned that in my introduction between happiness and humility. And we said some of us are happy because they define happiness as being harmonious. And so when things miss in the morning breakfast or the road or jam or something happens or they are sick or somebody dies, then they are not happy. But Jesus is our best example because there is something about it that leads us to humility. And now we are talking about something else here. And we are saying that uh, the, the city will celebrate when the godly succeed. Let's go to verse number 11. What does it say? Number 11 says, Upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper. Upright citizens. So the first thing I, I, we saw up there is that uh, the city celebrates when godly succeed. So the godly must succeed. The godly must succeed. The other important thing about it eh, is that eh, the, 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 the city will prosper. When? When will they prosper? When the upright citizens are good. The upright citizens are good for a city and make it prosper. So the question I am having for you, today I am having questions. The question I'm having for you is right there. The upright citizens are good. Are you good? Are you good? What is this we call good? The Bible says God is good. All the time. And all the time, God is good. But listen, you are a child of God. Are you good? This is one of the economic principles of God. 
economic principle of God. And let me move you a little bit further because I'm about to finish now and bring you to Proverbs 11, 25. I'm speaking about a principle, one principle. This principle has to do with the righteous of God, the faithful of God in the land, the men and the women of God. The moment you are not prospering, the moment you are not in harmony with yourself, we are having a problem in the city celebrating, in the city moving forward, in the city prospering. The people watching me from Kitale, all from Bungoma, all from Mombasa, all from Kitale, all from Kericho, all from Kisumu, listen, the city will prosper. The city will celebrate when you as a righteous person, you are a position are as a godly person and, are, and you are succeeding. When you are known to be good, good. Somebody told me yesterday, I was conversing with a friend of mine in Turkey and I slept very late. And I was writing back and forth and I remember him right, uh, come, finishing by saying, Onesimus, you are a very good man. Because I was discussing about somebody who had nothing to do with me and I was so passionate and I was not sleeping and I was bothering this guy for this friend of mine who is sick and I want to know what can give him healing and help him. And we were trying to make sure that uh, my friend can get healing by the help of some medics or medical uh, assistance, things like that. And I was persistently asking questions. And I've been doing that in the last 10 days. And yesterday he says, e, this is good. Are you good? Can the city celebrate because of your goodness? Can the city prosper because of you? When the wicked die, things are different. People shout for joy. They say, kabisa. But they don't tell you. They come to mourn with you. We as Christians, we mourn with you and we keep, but sometimes some things are not very, very good. So the Bible says, the generous will prosper. Ha, ha, ha. Now I'm finishing with that one. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So, if you want to ask me one big thing that will give you an opportunity to cause your city to celebrate and to enjoy is when the generous, when the, uh, the generous will prosper, those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So for you to enjoy the kingdom economy, you need to be refreshed either by God or by God's people. But how do you get refreshed? You only get refreshed when you become generous. When you give. Who do you give? You give those who are needy. You give those who are wanting help. One of my many assignments I had when I went to the U.S. is a friend of mine who had died during Corona uh, season and uh, had left the wife with so much debt. And I happened to know that uh, there was a family that was helping that friend of mine in Tanzania in a place in, in, in California. And so when I went there, I went specifically, I flew specifically to that city Got there around Saine, that's 10 in the morning. Went to sit down with this man in, a, in an eating place. And I said, you know what? That's why I came. My next plane to go back to my own assignment was the following day very early in the morning. This guy asked me, you mean Onesimus, you just came here telling me this? Yes. You didn't have anything for yourself? No, this is myself. The thing that I wanted is to be generous with my time and defend and pitch for a widow of a friend of mine who has a debt and a half, can't have peace of anything. She reminded me of a prophet who died and they were auctioning the children and everybody else who was alive related with him. And I said, I will go and intervene for this person here. So the Bible says here, the generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. So do you want to prosper? Be generous. Do you want to be refreshed? Refresh others. By doing that, the city will celebrate you. The city will celebrate. The leaders 
will be righteous because that is you and, and me. And finally, you will experience, the city will experience goodness because you are good. You can keep your time. Most of us, they pull out a, a list that they, they hide here. They have their own list. And all they are saying is about themselves and their list. Sometimes forget about your list and go to the list of your neighbor, the list of your friend, the list of your, bro your brother, and refresh them. So tonight, I want to ask you a question. Are you causing the city to prosper? Are you causing the city to celebrate because you are righteous, because you are good, and because also, we said here, you are generous. You are giving. You are giving. Blessed is giving than receiving. These are the things that we are asking ourselves. And these are the things, even in the season of a purpose-driven moment, we are talking about fellowship. These are things that have to do with others. If, if others will celebrate, if others will prosper, if others will receive from you, honestly, God has visited us because of you. That's the kingdom principle, not principles. You, you, one person, has to be this Proverbs 10, 11, 10, 11, 11, and 11, 25. They always speak about one thing. that We must be that one person. I want to pray with you so that uh, the cities, the city will really enjoy and celebrate. And from wherever you are, you will be generous enough so that as you refresh others, may the Lord and his people refresh you. That is the way of going. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for the opportunity today to share about an economic principle that is, it resonates with us, that we bring about much celebration because we are godly because we know you. We cause a city to celebrate, be, to prosper, because we are a good. We refresh others, and therefore we are refreshed, and a generous person will prosper by giving to others. How I pray that we shall not be inward looking, but outward, because that is what you showed us. We give you honor and praise, and we thank you this Wednesday for talking to us. Help us to live this word in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. We will talk to you and see you next Wednesday. Asante sana.